Hi Scorpio, welcome to your July 2018 love reading. It's Raina here. Well, I this is the first reading I'm doing of the day. I was clearing my throat a lot, so I'm going to just try to get through this. Hopefully it doesn't keep happening or I'm going to have to abandon this until later. I can already feel it coming on. So, um, This is a different spread than I normally do, if you notice the difference in the positions, but I'll explain. The focal point in July is the Hierophant card. This card connects to religious matters, the clergy, but for love reading specifically, marriage, all issues surrounding marriage. So it could be your marriage. And if we look at the past position, we can get an idea if this is your marriage. What is that marriage? What's going on in that marriage that is causing you to be focused on it? The moon card can deal with addictions. It can deal with deception. So any kind of lying. It can deal with mental illness. So if you have been living with a partner who has any of those characteristics, you may be um, pretty much fed up and you may be ready to call it quits with that person. What may be stopping you is that you have some kind of religious indoctrination that says divorce is wrong. This is a, the Hierophant is a traditional card. It is connected to Taurus, so that could be the person you're dealing with. But if you have, if you come from a background where it's considered a sin to get divorced, that may be kind of stopping you from doing it, even though you may be very unhappy with what's going on. And you may be looking for some kind of change. And yet something within you finds it hard to make that final, um, take that final step. The Hierophant is also a card of conforming, you know, conformity. Uh, you, I would say to tradition, but if you have like a social circle and everybody's married and you don't want to be the oddball in the group, you may be thinking in terms of not wanting to stand out. And um, if you're dealing with somebody <clears throat> and it's not a marriage situation, it could be that you found out that they are married. And that was something that they either conveniently left out or they deceived you about altogether, that they said that they were single. And that can be quite um, a slap in the face or disappointing to you at the very least because you might have thought that they were going to... Um, that they were going to honor you and they ended up deceiving you. There's one, I think that that's one of the things that Scorpios fear the most is being deceived, um, being, being cheated on, things like that. And yet it can happen to the best of us, right? <clears throat> and I'm not saying I'm a Scorpio, I'm a Sagittarius. I'm saying everybody has the capacity for that to happen to. It is kind of interesting, though, because it's hard for me to believe that many Scorpios can actually be lied to, because you are a sign that is so aware of people's um, attitudes, and they're, you're kind of psychic, or you're very psychic, you're very perceptive, and you know when somebody's lying. <laughs> and so... My feeling is that if you were deceived, it's because you looked the other way, you didn't acknowledge certain inconsistencies or what have you. And I'm not trying to blame the victim. I'm saying that maybe there was no victim. Maybe you got with somebody that you know deep down inside you shouldn't have gotten with, that, that this person wasn't really um, a good bet, you know, safe bet or a sure thing for whatever reason. 
the the spiritual work to do and this could be shadow work this could be and and by the way shadow work when I'm saying that I'm talking about specifically looking at that which you may have a hard time looking at sometimes which you kind of tend to shove under the rug um, the king of pentacles is the pinnacle of someone who is financially solvent and you know very actually very uh, financially successful and also dependable and it's also the sign of the father the king and so if you did not know your father or if your father was in and out of your life and was not a good role model he wasn't dependable he did not support you your family um, that may be something that you need to really finally um, spend some time grieve that loss let go you know forgive this person for their shortcomings and understand that not all men are like that that there are men that take care of their families there are men that stick around that they don't abandon their families that you can count on them <laughs> and um, I'm sorry for those who didn't get to experience that because I think that it really um, does make a difference I don't feel that fathers are expendable that they're optional I feel that they have a place to serve in a child's life and um, yeah so that's that's what I have for that position and um, <clears throat> it could be too that there is a male uh, earth sign Taurus since we're looking at the higher fat Taurus Virgo Capricorn who is a good guy and maybe you have overlooked this guy maybe he really likes you but you've overlooked him because he's not flashy because he's so dependable that and you're so you know messed up in the head that's how I'm gonna put it that you think that's a liability that you think oh he's always there he's like a puppy dog he's just so you know predictable but meanwhile you go after the guy who never answers your calls and who isn't there because again what kind of patterns have you experienced in your life that make you more interested in that the kind of the um, direction to go in the kind of the advice to get what you're looking for the Emperor card in, in one sense a sense of empowerment that that you embody where you are strong enough to accept a person who is strong. That's, I, I, I'm going to pat myself on the back and say that that's kind of a profound statement that I just made. I don't feel like I even thought it up. I just said it came out of my mouth. Um, because sometimes people go for a weak partner because they can control them. And it takes... A lot of guts to find somebody who's willing to call you on your BS who's willing to challenge you the Emperor is about the empowerment that you give yourself but also could be the type of person that is good for you um, this card connects to Aries and I wouldn't say right off the bat that Scorpio and Aries people are going to be that compatible because even though you both have Mars as a ruler um, it's fire and water. It's like really different. However, that's just on the surface of the sun signs. I can't say that across the board, but I'm just talking about the spirit of this sign. And this sign also connects to judges, um, people that have to make important decisions. So this could be about if this is a marriage, you could be you know calling a lawyer and wanting to just div get divorced because you're done with a marriage maybe you're tired of the lies you're tired of the drinking or the you know 
the whatever the addiction is, whatever is going on, cheating. Um, anything else I want to say about that particular card? Law enforcement, police officers, if there's somebody who you know, that could be somebody who is a good match for you. What are the pitfalls? What are the obstacles that keep you from getting what you want? The Queen of Swords. Interesting, because you're a water sign. The Queen of Swords, and we're going to look at it, that you are female. Uh, well, we don't have to do that, but I would say the Queen of Swords puts her emotions on the back burner because she's trying to protect herself. And I mean, that's not necessarily true. Sometimes the Queen of Swords wants to be able to function in a more rational way. But this is the challenge position. So this can be like the, the I'll just say it, the bitch archetype of the feminine energy. And this, a man can be a bitch too, in terms of like, being um, sarcastic, cutting somebody down. This is, you know, we think of the male negative energy as more of the physical brute force energy. But the, the feminine, feminine negative energy on the emotional level, on the verbal level, can be very abusive, can be very destructive. Don't ever think that that isn't the case. The words that you say... If you're angry, if you're resentful, and you say mean things to people, that does affect them, even if they never tell you that it does. So looking at why you're lashing out, if that's true for you, really what's happening is the person's in pain and they're trying to protect themselves. They feel like vulnerable. Maybe they feel like they have been hurt in the past and either they are afraid of love and they're trying to kind of push love away because then they don't have to face a breakup. So maybe you're the type of person you get a lot of people, you know, coming after you and you push them away with your barbed tongue and you think it's cute and it's not. And you're just trying to protect yourself, but you're doing it in a destructive way that hurts the other person. Um, and it's about, it's about um, seeing the patterns, if they exist. Healing the spirit that's been broken from rejection or... Yeah, feelings of rejection, feelings of abandonment, but not lashing out. That's the important thing. Not projecting your stuff onto somebody else that has nothing to do with whatever you've been through. What's coming in is represented by the Eight of Swords. This is about confronting those thoughts, those ideas that keep you trapped, keep you um, caught up in a in that um, prison cell of your mind. If you're in a marriage, you may feel like you can't get out. That something is keeping you there and you don't know what it is. But you can confront those thoughts and figure out what is the basis of them. And don't worry if you're not strong enough to leave right now. Unless this relationship is so demoralizing that it really is adversely affecting you. If that's the case, then you have to do whatever you can to escape this situation because it can, it can affect you much more uh, to stay than to leave. But if you're, if you're just unhappy with the situation and you don't have like this serious I felt like the train was coming down the street. It was so loud. It's weird. 
Um, but if you don't have like a really uncomfortable situation, then you can just take your time and disengage gradually. It depends on your particular situation. But if somebody who seems like a nice person is trying to curry favor with you and you've been a jerk to them, then apologize. And don't just apologize, tell them why. Say, I've been hurt and this is my go-to method for dealing with it. I, I put people down and I know it's wrong, so that's why I'm apologizing. I know I have work to do. The outcome is the King of Cups. Now, I just said work to do. This could be you enlisting the assistance of a counselor. This could be um, a healer of some sort because it's the Cups. Um, so any kind of alternative healing like energy work, shamanic healing is a form of energy work if I'm not mistaken. And um, it could be that there's a mature water sign male who is there for you and who you meet and the right kind of person who understands you. So even if you give them, you throw them a little bit of shade at the beginning, they are smart enough, they're savvy enough, they're psychic enough to know that that's all fronting, that you really are a softy deep down underneath and that you're hurting and they want to heal you, they want to help you. So the three water signs are obviously your sign, Cancer or Pisces. And um, it's very interesting because we go from the Eight of Swords to the King of Cups. We go from that feeling of oppression to that feeling of understanding, of being understood. And I think there's not a better feeling than that sense that another person understands us, that they get us, and that they can see past some of our imperfections and our coping mechanisms that are born out of pain, really. And um, so anyway, I hope that um, you enjoyed this, Scorpio. Sorry about the train. <laughs> I was hoping that it would be gone by now. But anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Take care. Bye.